All right, hate to do this to you guys, but I'm going to anyway. All right, uh, so it turns out when Taka was in Moscow, he didn't just do the interview with Putin. He, who knows who else he talked to, but it turns out that he had, um, he wanted to meet Dugin. He wanted to meet Alexander Dugin. Alexander Dugin is a character, I've talked about him on the show in the past, uh, is a character that the, uh, that the um, uh, far right in the United States, the crazy right in the United States, really admires and respects. Uh, even Jordan Peterson has said, I wouldn't say nice things about him, but has referred to him as a real philosopher. I think he's a real hack, but anyway, um, or a real bad philosopher, real evil philosopher. Uh, anyway, uh, Tucker Carlson wanted to meet him. It turns out that when he met him, he realized, ooh, this guy's really interesting, and I'll tape a short interview. So he taped a 20-minute interview with Dugan. Dugan speaks in English um, uh, in this interview. He often um, uh, speaks in uh, Russian. I've done a number of shows, a couple of shows, I think, on Dugan, uh, this guy is a real witch doctor. Uh, he is a um, mystic. He is, you'll see, a, a real collectivist. He is a hater of the West and, and uh, particularly the Enlightenment of the West, in the West, the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. He is a medievalist, if we can call him that. He is an advocate for Russian Empire uh, and, uh, and, and an advocate for violence, an advocate for war. Um, his daughter, I reported this on the show uh, at some point, uh, his daughter was assassinated by, uh, by Ukraine. They probably were trying to kill Dugan and killed her accidentally, but she was a piece of work too. She was a huge supporter of uh, Russia's attack on Ukraine, a real hater of Ukraine, a real spread of propaganda against Ukraine. So um, in that sense, from the Ukrainian's perspective, I'm sure no great loss. That they missed Dugan and got her. Um, Tucker is outraged by the idea that she was uh, killed by Ukraine because, as he says, as you'll see him say, Dugan is just a philosopher. He's just a philosopher. He's just a philosopher. Why would you, why would you be afraid of a philosopher? Um, which is interesting, right? The role of ideas. Um, but uh, Dugan is very influential. Uh, he's treated as a real celebrity among many elements within the American right. He's treated as a real celebrity among many elements of the European right. Um, he's a real traditionalist. Again, a medievalist. As I said, a medievalist. He, he really wants, from a values perspective, to go back. And I, I, I wasn't going to do this, but I listened to the interview. And particularly the first few minutes of it are so striking. Dugan is so explicit. And I think in a way that surprises Tucker, he's so explicit about what he thinks the enemy is, what the enemy really is, that I thought you should listen. Because to really understand the new right, to really understand where the new right is heading, where the worst elements on the right are, I, I think it's worth understanding what people like Dugan hate about the West. What is it? that really pisses them off? What is it that really upsets them? Okay. Um, you can still ask questions in the Super Chat. Uh, remember, you guys support Make This Show Possible. You can support the show with a sticker. Uh, you know, everybody doing $4 right now would actually get us to the target, uh, get us to where we need to be. And you can also ask questions on this topic or any topic. I will leave time at the end to answer questions. I will make sure that we go as long as we need today to answer every one of your questions as needed. Uh, but let's, let's go to Tucker Carlson uh, interview with uh, Dugan, and I'll be commenting on it. What's interesting is that, once again, Alexander Dugan is not a military leader. He yeah, I mean, uh, Tucker's shocked by the idea that people think that a philosopher is threatening. When we, I think, hopefully you, I, I certainly do, we understand that military leaders, political leaders, they are in some senses, I wouldn't say pawns because they have free will, but they are driven by philosophers. Philosophy is the cause. Philosophy is what drives history. 
Philosophy is what drives military leaders. If you want to be afraid of something, be afraid of philosophers. They will shape the future. They are the ones who inspire the military leaders. By the way, thank you, Mary Eileen, uh, for two stickers. Two stickers. I really, really appreciate that. Um, all right. So let's keep going. He's not a close daily advisor to Vladimir Putin. Ideas don't work uh, in a way that you have to be a close daily advisor. He is a writer who writes about big ideas. Yeah, that's who changes the world for better or for worse. And for this, his books have been banned by the Biden administration in the United States. You can not buy them on Amazon. Ban now, so I don't know that claim. I, I try to research it a little bit, and it turns out that this claim that the Biden administration has banned the books of Alexander Dugan, and as a consequence, you can't find him on Amazon, is made, has been, only been made, as far as I can tell, by Tucker and people citing Tucker. I haven't seen any actual evidence that this is true. Now, what is true is that you cannot find Dugan's books in English on Amazon, except one of his books, I think, is on Kindle version. You can find them on Amazon in Russian. And you can find a lot of his books in secondhand bookstores on, uh, uh, online in the US um, uh, that are available, and I'll ship them to you. But you cannot find them new on Amazon uh, books he authored, except for the one on, on Kindle. Now, I don't know why that is. I, I find it very hard to believe that the Biden administration banned them. That is a clear violation of the First Amendment. Uh, uh, maybe they work to convince Amazon to take them off, and maybe Amazon did a partial job of taking some stuff off and leaving the ones that got left off, like his books in Russian, which you can buy on Amazon. Uh, the same, something similar is on uh, 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 Barnes & Noble, although it seems like there you can find Alexandra Dugan's books in German. It's also possible that Dugan's books are out of print in English, uh, and that's why they're in German and Russian. You can buy them there. I just don't know. So Tucker is saying the Biden administration banned the books in the United States. I'm pretty sure that's false, but that's typical of, of, of Tucker taking something marginal, maybe, maybe, maybe not, and just declaring it absolutely without question. Biden administration banned it. I know that. And that's why Amazon doesn't carry it without even considering kind of why isn't anybody suing around that? That's a clear First Amendment violation. Banning books in the United States because the ideas inside are too dangerous. He's often described, again, in the English language press as can't do far that in right. The We'll let you assess, but we wanted to talk to him about some of his ideas, these ideas that are so dangerous that his only daughter was murdered over them and his books have been banned in the United States. Remember, ideas are unbelievably dangerous. They're the, what motivates all bad guys. They're, they're the motivates Hitler, they motivated Stalin, they motivated Stalin was a communist, they motivated Putin, they motivate Xi, they, they, motivated, they motivate many. I, I mean, without ideas, none of these regimes would survive. And so we're happy to have him join us now. Mr. Dugan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me and, and welcome to Moscow. Of course. Thank you. Um, so we were talking off camera. Actually, we were having a conversation that we were not going to film. Just interested to meet you. But what you said was so interesting um, that we got a couple of cameras and put this together. And my question to you was, what do you think is happening in the English language countries? And I said, all of them, United States, Canada, Great Britain, New Zealand, Australia, all at once decided to turn, seemed to, turn against themselves. You know, this great turmoil, um, and some of the behavior seemed very self-destructive. And where do you think, as an observer, that comes from? So pay attention here, because he lays it out. He tells you exactly where it comes from. So where do all the problems in the West come from? And Dugan, like Putin, <laughs> when, when Tucker interviewed Putin, uh, and Putin went 200 years, two, you know, what was it, S more than 200 years. He went way into the history and started telling him about history. Dugan does exactly the same thing. He says, this is going to take a while, and he goes into history. And, he's, and, and, and notice what he pinpoints as the cause of all the West's problems. So in my, I could just uh, suggest, uh, uh, express my reading of, of, of that. Uh, it uh, demands a little patience. So uh, uh, I think that um, everything started with individualism. 
There you go. Everything started with individualism. Now, when he says everything, he doesn't mean good stuff. He means the problems, the bad stuff, the difficulties. Everything started with individualism. Right? Individualism is not the solution. Individualism is the problem. You don't like individuals. And if you don't believe me, we'll keep listening, right? <laughs> and notice how he said, you're going to need some patience because this is going to be long, he says, right? And it's a history lesson. So individualism, uh, that uh, was a wrong understanding of the human nature. So individualism is a wrong understanding of human nature. We're not fundamentally individuals. We shouldn't be concerned about own interests. That is not a primary concern and pursuing our own values. And we shouldn't set up political systems that protect individuals, individuals to pursue uh, their life, their values, uh, their ideas. That is, that was the mistake. That's the turning point that the we left went off, that the left got into trouble. Oh, I'm sorry, not the left, the West got into trouble. The nature of man. When you identify uh, individualism uh, with the man, with the human uh, nature, you cut all the relations uh, to everything else. So you, you have a very special idea of the subject, philosophical subject, as individual. And everything started in, in the Anglo-Saxon world with Protestant reform and with nominalism. Before that, nominalist attitude that there are no ideas, only things, only individual things. So individual... So he blames the Reformation, right? He blames, again, the Reformation was the idea. And think about what he's blaming. He's blaming a, a Christian movement that basically said... We don't rely on authority. We don't rely on a chain of command to interpret God, to communicate with God, to tell us what God means. Every individual can read. Every individual can read the, um, uh, you know, the um, uh, can read the Bible, can read God's word. Every individual can interpret it, and we should not rely on the authority of a Catholic church in order to do that, right? in order to do that. So uh, he's basically saying the problem with the West is when it became too individualistic. And of course, nominalism is wrong. He's right about that. But here's a guy who is explicitly, unapologetically identifying the source of all the West's problems, the origin of all the conflicts we have in the West with individualism. Now note that you don't get a comeback of saying, well, isn't individualism also the source of all our, you know, all the good stuff that we have, all the, uh, you know, all the, um, all the technology, all the wealth, all the positive things that we have. Y you don't get that. It's individualism is the source of the problems. And the source of individualism, in his mind, is the Reformation. And the Reformation is because the Reformation gave the individual, stated the individual has the ability to communicate with God. Remember, Dugan is very religious. Dugan is Christian Orthodox. Christian Orthodox is like Catholic. It is the Eastern equivalent of Catholicism. It's very hierarchical. The, uh, the Orthodox, the Christian Orthodox leader, Pope, is the equivalent of a Pope, is the equivalent of the guy who communicates with God and lets us all know. We don't get to make decisions for ourselves. Note that he says that individualism cuts us off from everything. Cuts us off from everything. Because... The way they view individualism is, and, and the way they, they purposefully distort individualism to present individualism, is they present individualism as atomistic, as nominalism, as separate, as... But the reality is that individualistic cultures, 
are the most cooperative. And indeed, much of the production, much of the wealth creation, much of the scientific discoveries in individualistic cultures happens through voluntary cooperation. What individualism rejects without question is authoritarianism, is the imposition of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, knowledge of authority on the individual. What it rejects is the idea that the individual should not be free to pursue his own cooperation. Uh, it, it was the key and is still key concept that was uh, put in the center of liberal ideology. And li uh, liberalism, as uh, in my reading, it is uh, a kind of historical and cultural and political and philosophical process of liberation of individual, of any kind of collective identity. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> liberalism is the liberation of the individual from any kind of collective identity, any kind of collective authority. It's the liberation of, and liberalism here, we're talking about the classical liberal sense, right? The classical liberal. Now, he's, by the way, much more humble here than he usually is. It's like, I think, I, this is my interpretation. Usually, he doesn't come across as that. But uh, so he's identifying liberalism with individualism, individualism with the idea of liberation from collective identity and, by the way, collective authority. And he's right. But that's what he thinks is bad. That's what he thinks is bad. And again, the only reason I'm showing you this is not because I picked some crazy Russian off the street, but because Tucker views him as worthy of interview and because the American right and many American podcasters and others love this guy. I mean, he, he, he has been regularly, at least before the war, uh, in Hungary. Uh, Orban loves him. The uh, Hungarian right, the European right loves him. Uh, and the American right, the new American right loves him. So it's important we understand where they're coming from. And, and if, if you only remember one thing, the new right is anti-individualism, anti-classical liberalism, anti the founding fathers, anti the Declaration of Independence, which is a document of individualism, individual rights, which is the ultimate manifestation of individualism in politics. Right? This is what the new right worships. This is what the rising European right and the rising American right this is what they believe in. So the American right today, you think of the American right as the historical conservatives who love the founders, who love, who think they understand individual rights, who think they support individual rights, who think they're pro-individual, pro-capitalism. He's unmasking them. He's saying no. To be, you know, to be truly right is to be anti-individualism and pro-collectivism. Pretty explicit here. Collective or so, the, 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 that transcend, uh, transcends uh, uh, individual. And so uh, it's a liberate individual for anything that transcends him, like God. I, I'm all for that. That's cool. That started with uh, refuse of Catholic Church as collective identity, yep, as uh, of empire, um, uh, Western empire as collective identity. Notice Western empire, right? So this guy's pro-empire, particularly the Russian empire. He likes the Russian empire. So this is about the rejection. You know, one of the things that individualism led to, God forbid, is not only rejection of the Catholic Church, but the rejection of Western empire. Uh, after that, it was a uh, revolt against a national state as collective identity in favor of a purely civil society. After that, uh, that was, there was a big fight of the 20th century between 
uh, liberalism, communism, and fascism, and liberalism has won once more. Yes. So, and after the fall of the Soviet Union, there was only liberalism. Uh, and Francis Fukuyama has uh, pointed out correctly that no, there are there are no more any ideologies except of liberalism. And liber now, notice, notice a, a trick he does, and, and a trick that the left does. Right? He's forgotten about classical liberalism now, and now liberalism is everything in the West, right? So liberalism, in this view, has no meaning. Also, when he talked about human nature before, notice what he never, notice that he never actually mentions the one thing that at least we think constitutes human nature. The one thing that he thinks does not is it, it, he doesn't mention is reason rationality man is the rational animal he talks about individualism as implying whatever the individual wants thinks feels what, whatever whatever and you this becomes more important later on where he drifts into well now individualism lead us leads us to well we can choose our own gender and we, you know, in other words, uh, now in, in the next phase, he says, is we can choose not to be human. And he, and he, you know, he talks about transhumanism. Uh, but all of that is nonsense because individualism requires a means by which the individual survive. And the means by which individuals survive is reason. You cannot split individualism from reason. Now, I don't know what the problem is with transhumanism, right? I mean, is it that much of a problem if we stay individualists, we keep our mind, we keep our reason, and yet we enhance our physical abilities? We improve our genetic makeup. We use chips. And, and robotic arms to make us stronger, or a chip in our brain to access the internet more immediately. So, but he's against that because that's playing God. That's too focused on the individual. So notice what he emits and what he will emit throughout this interview. I don't know if we'll play the whole thing, but throughout the interview, what he emits throughout the interview is reason. And then what you're left with is modern far left crazies, which, according to him, are individualists, but we all know they're not individualists, right? Those poor Hamas people. Are they individualists? No. They're mindless collectivists. They're just following a collective he doesn't agree with. Are the transgender advocates? individualists or do, do we have a collective vistic agenda oh they clearly have a collectivistic agenda and they act like it they're little authoritarians they don't respect anybody other than their own kind so uh, once you make individualism equals whim worship once you make individualism equal atomistic, once you make individualism divorce it from reality, that is, from the need to adhere to reality, which is what you would do if you include reason in it, then yeah, then what you get is crazy stuff. But is that really what individualism actually means? He's a philosopher. He should know. Liberalism, uh, that was uh, liberation of this individual yes. uh, from any kind of collective identity. There were only two uh, collective identities to liberate from. Uh, gender identity, because it, it is collective identity. You are man or woman collectively. So you yeah, but that's, that's so bizarre, right? Do you really think of, 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 a, of feminine, masculine, male, female, as collective? Is the fact that I identify as a man 
is that in some way uh, 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 joining me with other men? Uh, isn't it just an identification of reality? But this is the sense in which, uh, you know, it's, it, what he's saying is gibberish. There's no collective identity as a man. By the way, one of the things that's interesting about Dugan is that he is a, um, he's a postmodernist. That is, he, he uh, as an adherent of a postmodernist philosophy. From the right, usually postmodernism is something that comes from the left. He's from the right embraces postmodernism. And that might, uh, might I include, might involve some of the loose and crazy way in which he uses uh, these terms. But there is no collectivism of men. I mean, there might be, right? I think those, uh, there used to be a long time ago, I haven't seen this in a long time, but like, well, they are now. I think the manosphere is pretty collectivistic. Oh, we're men, and this is how you, this is how you pick up women, and this is how you treat women, and this is how you do this. I mean, it's very, and it's very, there's a definite authoritarian streak there. I think that the, um, there used to be these men clubs. They used to go and beat on drums and do manly things together. Yeah, I mean, it can become that. But is me identifying as a man mean I have a collective identity? No, I have an identity. If I identify as an American, does that make me a collectivist? No. I'm an American individual. I'm an individual within this geographic political entity called America. It's really so, I don't know, concrete bound. It's so, if, if somehow you belong to a group, by belonging to a group, you then are collectivist. You have a collective identity. Something very, very wrong about that, right? You could yes. be alone. Uh, so uh, uh, liberation from gender, and that uh, has uh, led to transgenders, uh, to LGBT, and new form of sexual individualism. So uh, in the, uh, sex is all, 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 so, uh, something optional. And that was not just... So notice what, what he's really describing is, is a negation of reality. Now, he can get there because he's abandoned reason, because he doesn't identify human beings as being rational, i.e. connected to reality. That's what rationality means, connected to reality. And reality is that I am a man. I, I can't choose out of no way to be something different than that. So, you know, maybe some people, the reality is they're mixed or some, something like that. But for me, it's pretty clear, right? Um, but see how cleverly he's not made it all about individualism? Transgenderism is about individualism, and yet when you, uh, uh, when you look at the transgender movement, you don't get individualism at all. You get a very much a collectivistic dictates of a movement. And really, if I had identified the problem of why America is in decline, why the West is in decline, is the rise of collectivism. A different form of collectivism, a new form of collectivism. It's not communist. It's not fascist. It's authoritarian, leftist, nihilistic, egalitarianism. But it's still a new form of collectivism, not of something different. Uh, um, deviation of liberalism. That was ne necessary elements of implementation and the victor of this liberal ideology. And the last step that is not yet totally totally made is liberation from human identity humanity optional and when now we are choosing or you in the west you are uh, you are choosing uh, the sex you want as you want and uh, the last uh, step in this process of uh, liberalism implementation of liberalism will mean precisely the hu human optional so you can choose your individual identity to be human not to be human and that has a name transhumanism posthumanism um, singularity artificial intelligence uh, uh, Klaus Schwab uh, Kurzweil or Harari they openly declare that is inevitable future of humanity so we arrive notice how he sticks artificial intelligence in there he sticks all the all new technology in there and we're going to arrive at a point where we can declare ourselves non-human 
and uh, the next step is evolve out of our humanity. If, uh, to the uh, historical terminal station that we finally five uh, uh, centuries uh, ago we we have embarked in this train and now we are arriving at the at the last station. So that that is my reading. And when uh, uh, all the elements, all the phases of that, uh, you cut the uh, the uh, tradition with the past. Yeah, and, that, and that's really really important to him is the the. The cutting of tradition, the elimination of tradition, the elimination of the authoritarianism of that traditional past. So you are no more Protestant, you are secular, atheist, materialist. You that has nothing to do with reality. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an atheist because I'm reality. It has to do with I'm rejecting the past. Therefore, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a secular. I, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a weird way it's such a strained divorce from reality way of looking at the world uh, from the standpoint of truth is in the tradition. And everything else is, of course, a rejection of that truth. You are no more national state that served to liberal to liberate from empire, and now a uh, national state becomes um, at its turn obstacle. You are liberating from national state. Notice how he. Uh, this is interesting because the first time I've noticed this. He talks about empire. The state liberated us from empire, and he talks about it. I think this is important, as if empire was good. Empire was the right way. And think about what empire he's really referring to. What empire is this really relating to? He's really relating to the Russian Empire, right? Um, right now, Putin's goal is the resurrection of the Russian Empire, of a new Russian Empire. And that's Dugin. That's Dugin's ideology. The ideology of empire, indeed the nation state, must move away from the ideal. The ideal was the Roman Empire, the Russian Empire, the, the, the uh, what do you call it, uh, the Roman Holy Empire, right, under, you know, under, under, in, the, in the 13th, 14th centuries, or starting even in the, in the 10th century. The Holy Roman Empire. Empire is the real, what we really should strive for. This atomization, which has to do with individualism and, and, and it leads us to the nation state, he rejects that, right? He rejects that. And again, this is consistent. This is consistent with Russia going to war in order to try to expand and really establish a Russian empire. And that's what I've been telling you. Ultimately, really deep down motivates, not so deep down because he says it, Putin and, and the war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine is not about NATO. The war in Ukraine is about the desire, the necessity of a Russian empire. Uh, finally, family uh, is destroyed in favor of this individualism. And the last things, the sex that is already almost overcome, uh, sex optional and uh, in gender politics, there is only one step to, to arrive to, uh, to the end of this process of liberation, of liberalism. That is the abandoned human identity as something prescribed. So to be free from to be human, to, to, to have the possibility to choose to be or not to be human. And that is the, the agenda, political, ideological agenda, agenda of, of the tomorrow. That is why to, uh, how I see Anglo-Saxon world uh, that you have asked of, I think that is just the uh, avant-garde, uh, vanguard of uh, that process, because that started with uh, Anglo-Saxons' uh, imperial uh, empirism, nominalism, Protestantism, and now you are ahead as um, uh, Anglo-Saxon, more devoted to liberalism than any other European. So, so you, I mean, what you're describing. So that's the thing, you know, that's the point. Everything falls apart. Everything falls apart. Once you uh, accept individualism as whim worship, once you accept that individualism is atomistic, once you accept that reason, rationality have nothing to do with this. Now, 
you know, uh, somebody like Dugin is a Platonist. He is a rejecter of reason and rationality, at least as we understand it, right? And as a consequence, right, as a consequence, um, he is, whoops, All right, it looks like YouTube has suspended my, um, this stream. Uh, as a consequence, we will call it a day here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really have said everything I wanted to say, I think, about Dugan, and I will try to figure out what YouTube has done. Maybe I'm not supposed to be using this video from Tucker Carlson. Maybe uh, I'm violating a copyright. That, I guess, is possible. That might be the cause. I think I'm still streaming on uh, X. I think I'm still streaming on Facebook. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, you know, I, they stopped the stream on um, on YouTube for some kind of policy violation. So uh, and we're still streaming on the podcast. So I will call it here. We've got uh, three questions in the super chat. I will <coughs> I will leave those uh, for next show. Uh, tomorrow, don't forget tomorrow, 2 p.m. Uh, it's easy now because every week is the same thing. Um, and um, we, will, uh, we will go forward. So thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, whoops. I, it looks like I'm back. Is that possible? Do you guys see video? I'm back. So... Somebody reviewed the policy violation and brought me back. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> no idea what it is. Um, but uh, that was weird. That's never happened to me before on YouTube. I mean, I was speculating that the issue was a copyright violation of, uh, uh, of uh, Tucker, and, and, and Tucker was somebody complained or some algorithm figured out that I was violating somebody's something. I don't know, but it's back. So uh, whatever they found, they undid and uh, were back on. So, uh, and I was going to stop it there. Uh, I mean, it, it, you know, and, and, um, and uh, anyway, so because uh, that's what really what I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see the consequence. And you'll note that today so much of the right, and I actually need to do a show on this, um, uh, you know, so much of the right now is attacking the Enlightenment. I mean, I include here Ben Shapiro and, um, and uh, Jordan Peterson and others, uh, you know, Jordan Peterson who used to defend the Enlightenment and maybe still does in some way. But, um, you know, they're attacking the Enlightenment and whether they're attacking the Enlightenment primarily for, they're primarily attacking the Enlightenment uh, over the fact that the Enlightenment promoted individualism. That is, this issue of what is individualism, this issue of whether individualism is important, what is the value of individualism, is going to be the issue as we fight against the right, but also as we fight against the left. Because what we don't want is the left to take the mantle of individualism. The left is not individualistic, and we don't want anybody out there in the culture to associate individualism with the left. Individualism is the idea of man guided by his own reason, that the truth is accessible to man, that man as an individual should and can pursue his own happiness, that the individual should and can choose his own values, and that therefore as a state, the role of the state is 
to protect him from force so that he can choose his own values in pursuit of his own happiness. That's what individualism means. It doesn't mean ignore reality and pursue one's whim. Um, and it is, you know, and I, I know Dugan, uh, Dugan despises this, but it is individualism to say I identify that I am gay and therefore, I, you know, I'm attracted to X. That is part of the liberty, the freedom that individuals should have. And I know these people are obsessed with sex and sex being what it always has been. Uh, but, you know, this is, this is the fight that we have. Because the fight that we have is both with left and right. And it's very much about the nature of man. It's very much about are we a rational animal. It's very much about what does it mean to be an individual and what is the, what is it, what is the responsibility that comes with being an individual. And the right doesn't get it. And the left obviously doesn't get it. We're it. <laughs>